Hey guys, welcome to my legal classes. This is Ganesh Pujari and we were discussing major aspects from public international law. In my today's class, I am going to discuss one of the important principles given by Holland who said that international law is vanishing point of jurisprudence. Now we are going to discuss what exactly Holland has to say and then we want to see his statement in current scenario along with case laws. I hope that makes comprehensive video. With that, I am getting into my first slide. Remember that Holland is coming from analytical school. Now the father of analytical school that is John Austin who says there should be a sovereign and sovereign should give command and if somebody is not following the command given by sovereign that should be sanction or punishment. Now Holland says the laws are made by sovereign and these are enforceable laws because they are coming from sovereign as command and the judges and arbitrators are deciding if there are any breach of law. But in international law what happens there is no sovereign because there are multiple states and multiple sovereigns for the states but there is no one sovereign for the entire group of states or nations. So the absence of sovereign is available and the laws which are made at international level are not enforceable and there are no judges or arbitrators available and there is no sanction or punishment for the breach of law and all these laws are based on courtesy. So according to Holland international law is vanishing point of jurisprudence as there is absence of sovereign and the absence of sanction. He concludes by saying international law cannot be kept in the category of law. Now Justice V R Krishna Iyer who is the member of Indian Law Commission says it is sad that international law is still the vanishing point of jurisprudence. This view is not correct. It is now generally agreed that Holland's view that international law is the vanishing point of jurisprudence is not correct. If Krishna Iyer is saying so we need to see what exactly is making him to say so that means we have to go through the current scenario which will be my next slide. Holland might be correct considering his timeline however with the change of time and after two world wars that we have seen there is lot of change happened in international law arena. Now it is true that there is difference available between municipal law and international law. However, the difference is going slowly reduced day by day. Now the international treaties or conventions that we are signing today are mostly going with the doctrine of Pacta Sunt Servenda or the promises must be kept. Now if somebody is not keeping the promises there will be sufficient international pressure on them. So every nation is trying to bind with the agreements or treaties that they have signed with. That way the current scenario has changed and we cannot easily wipe off saying that international laws are vanishing point of jurisprudence. According to Dias, international law is obeyed and complied by the states because it is in the interest of states themselves. He justifies this with five major arguments. The first being the judgments of international court of justice are binding on states. Secondly, if any state does not honor the order or judgment of international court of justice, the security council may give its recommendation against such states for action. And thirdly, the judicial power of international court of justice that is voluntarily or compulsorily have been accepted by the states. And fourth one, the judgment of international court of justice has been followed till date that is one of the important argument. And fifthly, the system of enforcement that is sanction and fear has been developed over a period of time. These are the five major argument he has to make and one of the example for this can be if there is a threat to international peace and security under chapter 7 of the UN Charter, the Security Council can take necessary action to maintain or restore international peace and security. Besides this, the decision of the International Court of Justice are final and binding upon the parties of dispute. With this, we can say the international law is not the vanishing point of the jurisprudence. Today, we have a lot of scenarios which are strengthening the thought that the international law is no more the vanishing point of jurisprudence and one of the case law that we can study for that is the Gulf War 1991. In 1991, Iraq trespassed and acquired the whole territory of Kuwait and Security Council passed a resolution saying that this is violation of international law. So the Iraq has to liberate Kuwait. However, 
Iraq was not interested to listen to the Security Council. So USA came into picture along with his allies and they started putting lot of international pressure on Iraq and finally Iraq agreed to the Security Council. That is how in today's scenario all of the international community bring lot of pressure under those who are not following the treaties and make sure that the international laws are respected. Similar kind of action was taken against North Korea and Congo during the year 1948 and 1961 respectively. The next important incident that we are discussing is Libya incident where two of the terrorists from Libya has uh, shot down an American plane where two of the citizens of America got killed and the Security Council ordered the Libya government to surrender those two terrorists to USA and the Libyan government has followed the order of Security Council. Now this is how it is gaining power day by day. With all of those cases, it is safe to conclude now that international laws are no more vanishing point of jurisprudence. They got the power of sanction with international pressure today. And with that, I'm concluding my session also. Thank you so much for subscribing my channel. If not, please subscribe right now. Please like, share and comment my videos. All the very best for whatsoever purpose you are watching my videos. And thanks again.